Americans say they are afraid to speak their minds. A new poll finds 62 percent of people have political views. They now say they're afraid to share. And these concerns do cross party lines. The majority of Democrats, independents and Republicans all agree they don't feel safe to speak their minds on politics. All right, Katie, I want to start with you. I thought it was interesting digging into these numbers. There was one group that self-identified that said they feel that they have complete freedom to speak out. These are people who describe themselves as, quote, strong liberals. 58% of them said they have no worries at all. Well, I'm not shocked at all that they have no worries at all, considering they are usually the ones uh, engaging in this so-called cancel culture that we see. But Shannon, I think the implications for this are bigger than just people feeling like they can't speak politically, whether it's with their friends, their family. We talk a whole lot about the 2016 election polling, whether it was accurate or not. There's a lot of questions this year about whether pollsters will get it right between the race between uh, Joe Biden and President Trump. And if you're afraid to speak your mind politically, do you you really believe that people on the phone who are answering questions about their political affiliation, how they feel about very sensitive topics like race and the president uh, are, are telling the truth about the way that they actually feel. Um, I think that that puts a whole nother wrench into the situation with the polling and whether you can actually believe that people think the way that they do about the current state of the race. Yeah, and Juan, that leads me to another one of these numbers tucked in here. 77% of conservatives said they do not feel safe sharing anything. That was the biggest group. Now, does that give credence then to what Katie's saying, to what the president has said, is there is a silent majority out there not feeling safe to talk about it or talk to pollsters or post on Facebook, but they're going to show up at the ballot box? Well, you'd have to say that it's across a lot of polls. Uh, it's not just one poll taken, uh, you know, by people on the left. I mean, this it's it's Fox polls. It's, I mean, it's it's every poll. So I don't know. I mean, that's that would be pretty extreme. And also, the numbers in many of these polls, Shannon, are double digits. So again, that margin of error is pretty strong. I don't know, but I mean, it's always possible. I, I can tell you, I I've been the victim of left wing type of cancel culture. I was fired from a job at NPR. Mm -hmm. But I do think mm -hmm. that most Americans agree that when it comes to slander, lies, racist epithets and the like, there should be consequences uh, for that kind of talk. The problem is that we live in a very politically polarized era, the Trump era, mm -hmm. and I think lots of people use it uh, as a political weapon uh, to go after people they don't like or people they disagree with. And I also think you have a lot of new voices in newsrooms and on social media platforms, and they are challenging a lot of the existing powers that be in media, and sometimes the people in power don't like being challenged in terms of what they have to say. So to me, it ruins opportunities for real, honest debate, which is so necessary in a good democracy. We need to really be able to speak to each other, and I think that's why people are upset. Mm -hmm. Juan, we're glad you came over to the Fox family. Uh, Greg, I want to go to you because he says, <laughs> as Juan points out, there are younger people, different upstart kind of people. You know, there's this whole conversation about people, um, you know, feeling like Twitter is controlling the New York Times, the younger folks controlling it. The polls also show that Gen Z and millennials are more comfortable with cancel culture and think it serves a real purpose uh, than any other age group. Not so surprising. Well, and, and I would dispute Juan calling this the Trump era. This started well before Trump. It was the personalization of politics, which was begun in the 60s by the left, that if you were for, say, the Vietnam War, you wanted to kill babies. So this whole personal, personalization, that the political is personal, began with the left. It's not the Trumpers who are doxing people. It's not the Trumpers that are setting fire to buildings. It's not Trumpers that are dumping trash on people's porches or vandalizing. It is the left. It is the regressive left. And the First Amendment, it doesn't protect you with this stuff because it doesn't protect you from getting your career ruined or your family threatened or your reputation. It's, it's an amazing contrast to see how 
the loudest voices on the left claim that their voices are being silenced. No one's silencing them as they go out and they try to silence people through physical intimidation, through doxing. If I dare anybody to say blue lives matter and see what happens to them, right? Mm -hmm. Right? What will happen to them? You can't wear a red hat in a public place, even if it even if it looks like a Trump hat. And corporations and businesses are so scared of social media that they just quit whenever there's a mob, they have to stop. They have to grow a pair and realize that boycotters don't matter if they didn't like your stuff to begin with. People who claim they're boycotting your TV show weren't watching it. So your advertisers mm -hmm. and your companies, you got to stand up. All right. You got to protect your employees. Yeah, and Jesse, I mean, people are worried about their livelihoods uh, and employees are worried because a third of the people in the survey also said they actually think it could cost them their job or a promotion. Um, and we hear stories about people saying, listen, they found out I was a Trump supporter and either I got demoted or I didn't get the gig. They're not going to say that, but people worry that that's what's behind these employment decisions. And I worry more than anybody, <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> especially <laughs> much more than you. <laughs> Man, they might find out I'm a Trump supporter here and kick me out. No, I'm kidding. Um, Juan, you know, you got fired from NPR for something really ridiculous, but that's how we all feel. We're all Juan Williamses in America. We're basically all Juans walking around at NPR afraid to say how we really feel. Yeah. And I mean, and what you said wasn't even that bad. So that's how we feel. The only place I say how I really feel is on this show, and I'm still holding about 10 to 15 percent back. Um, you, I, I don't say how I really feel around my parents. I mean, I don't say how I really feel at a restaurant. You, know, you say how you really feel among your friends, and I agree with Juan, your last point. It, it's destroying honesty in America, and it's really holding this country back, because I bet if you ask people how they really felt about trade, illegal immigration, jobs, Black Lives Matter, I bet you get a very different opinion if that wasn't in a poll, if that was something they just told their friends. Hmm. Well, Jesse, you're going to get a mom still text holding very back 10 soon to 15. that says... You're, the, the mom text is coming. I mean, Jesse says he's holding back 10 yeah. to 15 percent. Text, I mean, what do you please mean let you're me know when back. we're having... That's coming. Will we get unfiltered Jesse Day 100 percent?